This video is going to walk through the setup process for the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus Financial Calculator. Um, and this process is important to follow before you try and work any problems either using formulas, so using algebra and arithmetic, um, or if you're going to use the time value money keys in the calculator, because some of the settings it comes out of the box with are um, don't, don't do us a lot of favors, and, and we need to correct them before we start working. If you're using a different calculator, like one of the HP financial calculators, I don't think there's a setup process to follow, uh, but I'm not familiar, as familiar with those calculators, so make sure and consult your manual and, and figure out what the default settings in those calculators are before you start working, or just look up some, some YouTube videos. I'm sure folks are talking about it out there. Okay, so the setup process for this calculator. When you turn this thing on right out of the box, it's set to show two decimal places. And that's not really going to be enough for some of the problems that we're working because we're going to be working with interest rates, which we'll need to express them as decimals, and so we're going to be dividing by the 100, and they're going to end up being really tiny numbers, and we're going to be solving for them sometimes, so the calculator is going to be showing us the result, and we just need to be able to see more than two decimal places. Um, so let's increase that. I'm going to increase mine to four. And before we go into that process of how to actually do it, though, I, I do want to say this because it tends to be a source of confusion. Um, setting the, the calculator to show more decimal places is in no way affecting the precision of the calculator. As the calculator is working things out, it's working it out to 12 to 13 decimal places internally um, as a level of precision. It's just rounding the final answer as it shows it to us, but it's still worked out to 12 or 13 decimal places. Uh, so this is just changing what it's going to show me, not what it's actually calculating internally. Okay, let's get this thing changed to, uh, I'm going to change it to four decimal places. And the way we do that is by opening the format menu, which is down here just above the decimal key. And we can see it's written above in that grayish text or kind of yellowish on the newer ones. So we'll hit the second key to get into it, second and format. And we'll see DEC equals, mine's set to two. I want to change it to four. So I'm going to type in four and press enter to store it. And now I see DEC equals four and I've got my four decimal places. Now there's nothing magic about four decimal places. It's just what I'm comfortable with. It gives me enough on both the left and right hand side of the decimal and we've got kind of limited screen real estate on this calculator so I just this just tends to be a good balance for all the problems that we work in this class so that's why I set it to four okay before we clear out of this um, I know the directions say to clear out but we can skip that step for now once we're in the format menu I'm just gonna hit the down arrow key four times and I will see CHN on the display and that again that was after I hit the down arrow key four times um, this is not algebraic rules of operation, so if we leave our calculator set here, if we were to enter a long string of um, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, it would not, the calculator would not work that string of arithmetic in the order that we expect, not the algebraic rules of operations that we are used to. So we want to change that, and the way we change it is by toggling it to AOS, which is algebraic rules of operations, and we do that by hitting second and set which is just above the enter key towards the top left of the calculator. So second and set, we'll toggle it back and forth between CHN and AOS. Once we see AOS on the display, the calculator is set to follow algebraic rules of operations and we're good to go. We can clear out of that. And then those settings are static. As long as you don't change the battery in the calculator, those settings will stay. You can turn off and on as many times as you want um, and those settings will stay. Um, and I don't, I've been using these calculators for over 20 years. I haven't changed a battery yet, so it should, should last a good long while for you. Okay, there are two other settings that we want to look at before we get out of here. One is we want to make sure the calculator is set to assume only one payment per year. And the way we check that is with the P over Y setting right here above I over Y. It's on the third row, second from the left. And again, it's written above in that sort of grayish or yellowish text. So the way we get into it is by hitting second and P over Y and we'll see P over Y equals whatever it's set to. Now this one out of the box, it is one, which is exactly what we want. We want it set to one payment per period. Unless someone else has used the calculator, if you used it for another class, it, it shouldn't be set to anything else. This is a default setting and that's what we want to set it to. I find this a lot easier just to leave this payment, these payments per year or payments per period set to one and then adjust the interest rate and the number of periods as I'm working problems that have payments more frequently um, than, than once per year, and that'll make more sense as we get into chapter five and beyond in the text. Uh, for now, I'll just leave that guy set to one. Okay, that's set. We can clear out of it. There's one more thing to check, and that's that we want to make sure the calculator is set to end mode 
which we can, we can actually tell from here, because if it were in begin mode, it would say BHN, BGN on the display. But it is something that you may end up switching back and forth between, and it can mess up some of the problems. So I want to go ahead and walk through that in the setup process so we know how to access it. Above the payment key on this, this third row of time value money keys right here, we see BGN, again, above the PMT key. So we hit second in BGN. Our calculator, by default, is set in end mode. So it should come up and say end. We can toggle it back and forth between end and begin mode the same way we did CHN and AOS. So by hitting second and set, we can set it to BGN mode. And now we see BGN up here. This is not what we want it set to. We want it in end mode. But just for the sake of, of knowing that it's set in begin mode and how you can know that, I'm going to leave it set there. And I'm going to clear out. And notice now in the top right corner of my calculator, I see BGN. That's a big red flag. My calculator is telling me that, hey, I'm set in begin mode, which means when we're talking about annuities, which we'll look at in chapter four, that um, it's assuming that cash flows happen at the beginning of each period instead of at the end of each period. Now, this assuming payments happen at the beginning of a period is an odd thing. We don't run into that a whole lot. Um, and so that's why it has a warning there that, hey, I'm in begin mode. Um, let's switch that back to, I'm going to hit second in BGN to get back in that menu, and then hit second set to toggle it back to end mode, and then I can just clear out and that end mode is set. And that's where I want to leave it unless I have to change it, and I'll know that in the problem because it'll be a little bit different problem. Um, it'll tell me the cash flows are happening at the beginning of the period, but we'll get there. All right, so for now, that's it. You're all set.